Hey everybody, welcome to the power session for this week. My name is Paul Blanchard, president of Habit Finder. Very excited to be with you today. Today we're talking about what we learn, what we know, and kind of our approach to that. And more importantly, the blind spot, the way that what we learn and what we know gets in our way. Looking forward to spending this 20, 30 minutes with you today talking about some things that we think can make a tremendous impact in your relationships, in your business, in your health and vitality, because it all comes down to the way we think. That's everything we do here at Habit Finder. It's the math and the science and the application and the intuition around what dictates almost everything that we do, and that is how we think. The, the way we think impacts every facet of our lives. It impacts our emotional state, the decisions we make, the actions we take, and ultimately the results we create. So if it was that simple, if you just needed to understand how you think to be able to improve your life, then why aren't more people improving their lives? Well, that's because what you think isn't necessarily what you think it is. What I mean by that is you've got conscious thoughts and you've got unconscious thoughts. You've got distractions and variables and multiple stimulations in life that just pull your attention away from actually being more aware of the way that you're thinking. But more importantly, we don't just want to dive into your thinking, okay? Because thinking is super important to understand. But specifically, what we want to understand are what are your thinking habits? Now, most of us think about habits in terms of behavioral habits. And they're learned just like thinking habits are learned, except thinking habits are far more difficult to understand because we have about 60 to 80,000 conscious thoughts a day. Okay, so here's the level of consciousness above the surface. We've got 60 to 80K, 60 to 80,000 conscious thoughts a day. Okay, and below the surface, we've got one to two million conscious thoughts a day. Now imagine trying to work on your behavior day to day, your behavioral habits, like brushing your teeth and making your bed and doing your prospecting calls and meeting with your board and whatever else, okay? Imagine if you had 60 to 80,000 actions, behaviors a day that you were trying to work through that you were aware of and one to two million actions or behaviors a day that you weren't aware of and then try and implement new behavioral habits. That's why thinking can be so difficult. And because we are metacognitive as human beings, super fancy word, okay? All it means is that as human beings, we're the only creatures on earth that can step back from our own thoughts and think about them. We can actually think about our own thoughts. We can actually have conversations with ourselves. And those of you just went, no, I don't do that. Well, that was one of the people that's normally involved in your conversations. And, and as you're sitting here making uh, observations about me and about the way I'm talking and, and about the subject matter, all of those are conversations with yourself. All of those are from some of our greatest gifts. But at the source, okay, as far upstream as you can get to being able to change your behavior, to be able to improve your emotional stamina and your uh, emotional habits comes down to your thinking habits. So everything that we talk about here at Habit Finder, do we talk about the behavioral and the tactical and the strategies? 100%. Those are important. But they're the easiest thing to figure out, okay? They are the easiest thing to figure out. For, I'll give you an example. If you want to get, if you want to lose weight, the behavior is the easiest part. You eat right and exercise, move, okay? Beyond that, it's, it's things like staying hydrated and getting good sleep. And then from there, I mean, those are the main primary things. That's pretty simple, okay? In fact, going to the gym consistently is tremendously more important than what you actually do there. Because what you do there isn't going to matter if you're not going there consistently. So you can see the behavior is the simple part. It is ultimately important because if you don't take action, okay, then the outcomes will not occur. You cannot create your dreams. You cannot build your business in your mind and then actually enjoy the fruits of that in the physical realm without actually taking the action. So I'm not here to argue that thinking is more important than doing on an actual creation scale in terms of on paper, tangible, measurable impact, okay? But in terms of what actually matters, in terms of the order of priority, it starts with the way we think. 
that then impacts the way we feel, that then impacts what we do and how long we can do it. And then sometimes we bypass what we think and try to psych ourselves out emotionally to do things differently and we run into our emotional stamina. Some of you have emotional stamina that can withstand thinking patterns that are sabotaging you for a couple hours. Some of you have the stamina for a few weeks, a few months maybe, and there are a few unicorns out there where regardless of how you think, you can sustain new actions and new structures and new opportunities for years. But considering all the tangibles, all the variables involved, we don't always consider at what cost, okay? Now, let me back up a little bit. We've got these dimensions. We've got the, the thinking, the emotional, and the behavioral. All of them are important. It's important to understand your emotional tendencies, which most of the world would call personality. Those are your emotional tendencies, nothing more. Okay, Your personality is about as solid as your emotions, meaning it's, they're very uh, amiable. They're very changeable. Uh, it's why Ogmandino, who is at the heart of this company, it's the reason we started this company in 2000, almost 20 years ago, uh, coming up next month, was because of Ogmandino, the legacy he stood for and the books he wrote and the impact he's had on the world. And we started this company because of, in particular, the greatest salesman in the world. And in The Greatest Salesman in the World, Ogmandino, in scroll number six, right in the heart of the book, talked about, I will be master of my emotions. And, and goes on to talk about how we dance with our emotions, not how we control them. Um, what we control are our actions, despite the emotions, because of how we choose to understand the emotions. We don't control the emotions so we can control our actions. Then we become a totalitarian to ourselves, which is, if you've ever studied history, not a good thing, okay? There are not a lot of good totalitarians, and by not a lot, I mean no good totalitarians out there in terms of leaders. So when leading yourself, very important that you show up understanding these elements. And as we break this down, as we get an opportunity to understand these dimensions, okay, I want to make this a little simpler. I, I realize I came out with a fire hose. I'm pumped up today and excited to be on this power session. By the way, part of it is because we only have today and next Tuesday are, is the last power session um, that we'll have for 2019. And then I won't see you again until January 7th um, for our first power session of 2020. So want to make sure we get you everything that you need to get through what can be a really challenging season. A challenging season because not only is there immense reflection, which can tend to look at the deficits rather than what it was accomplished, or when we are looking at what was accomplished, feel like we're just justifying things or or we're just numbing ourselves or whatever the case is. And at the same time, we're looking to the future. We're pretty, we're stretched pretty thin in December, just how we're culturally programmed considering the new year and the end of the current year. So I hope to give you some things to consider that can really help you out. As a, a client of mine was talking about recently during this uh, Merry Stressmas time of year. Okay, love that. So again, we've got the thinking dimension. Then we've got the emotional dimension. And then we've got behavior. This is the three dimensions of our development, the three dimensions of how we live, the three dimensions of, of, uh, of how we improve. Okay. Now, uh, we've talked about this before. If you put all your eggs in this basket and just try to change your behavior, it's going to be at the mercy of these two things. And you're going to be able to do the things you want to do for as long as you can feel them and then a little bit longer. But that's it. As soon as you've run out, of, run out of feeling like you want to do it because of your enthusiasm and your launch out of the gates excitement, okay, most, a lot of people refer to this as the honeymoon phase, then you might last a little bit longer than that. But, um, and if you go against your thinking, I mean, you're stuck playing these two games. Okay? For a lot of people that just focus on behavior and have no awareness here, rarely do they even get off the ground. So most people are playing back and forth between these two. We're inviting you on habitfinder.com to be able to actually scientifically measure this one, okay? Just like you would do an aptitude test for your behavioral tendencies, um, and then you can do a personality test for your emotional tendencies, we invite you to go a little bit deeper, go under the surface of both these things, okay? Because really the, 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 the more accurate way to put this as we're talking about it would be like this, emotion, behavior, and thinking, this is what's driving these two things as these interact with each other and these 
impact every facet of these two things. So we invite you to go below the surface, uh, go to habitfinder.com for free and measure this scientifically. Now it's gonna be weird at first. For those of you who have taken it, you know exactly what I'm talking about because it's a very different process. We're not gonna ask you situational questions. In fact, we're not gonna ask you any questions at all because it's not about your subjective answers to questions. It's about how you deduce patterns of thinking as we present them in a mathematical and scientific fashion. And because it's being presented to you mathematically without having to teach you formal science of axiological mathematics and Cantor's transfinite calculus, we present it to you in a more familiar way using words that you are familiar with and terms that you're familiar with. Some you'll like, some you'll scratch your head on, some you definitely won't like, but that's very important in the evaluation to see how you order them to force your thinking to rank the assessment. And that gives us an opportunity to measure this. Now, those of you who have taken aptitude and other behavioral tests and emotional and other personality tests are gonna have a hard time with your habit finder results at first because these, okay, tell you a lot more intimately how you are interacting with you on a daily basis. So awareness is high. People will read personality tests and are just like, oh my gosh, it totally nailed me. People will get to their thought and go, that totally nailed me, but I don't see how that's showing up. Well, because it's not necessarily has to show up to still be a thinking pattern that's going on under the surface. Because we have a great mechanism as human beings where we create what's called compensatory processes. We compensate for challenges in our thinking. We compensate for wanting something in our life that unconsciously we don't actually want. And then the compensation will occurs in between to be able to find the middle ground that keeps us stuck where we currently are. I'll say that again because that's important. We want something. We think we want something in our life, but unconsciously we don't want it. And then our brain compensates to create a stalemate and we stay stuck where we are. That's why a lot of people are not growing. And the people that are are usually doing it in spurts focused on behavior and emotion when we want to focus on our thinking. Now, regardless of what category you're focusing on, whether you are focusing on improving your behavior so that you can learn more about your emotions, so that you can reprogram your thinking patterns... Okay? Or if you're focused on changing your thinking patterns so that you become more aware of how you're feeling so that you can do things better. Or if you're focusing on how you can think better around why you're doing these certain behaviors so that you can be more cognizant and, and in control of observing your emotions. However you want to do this, this is the critical factor. How you're thinking. And one of the primary things that drives any of this, in fact all of this, okay, is how you're learning. How you learn, your learning will dictate how you can understand, which will dictate how you can apply, which will dictate the results that you can create. Learning is essential. If any of you are not seeing yourselves, as Evan Pagan would say, as the chief learning officer of your life, that that is your number one role, that is critical. That is so important that you understand that learning is your top priority. Learning so that you can understand, so that you can apply. And then you can understand even better, and then you can learn more. And it creates this beautiful cycle in learning. Here's one of the great challenges, though. Okay, There's lots of things that, that talk about this, but I'm just going to break it down really simple for you. Any of you that are more than 5 to 12 years old, depending on the experiences in your life, have already learned, in general, everything you're going to learn about life. Okay, In general, categorically meaning there is not much blank canvas, if any blank canvas left in your brain in terms of how you interpret things and how you process things after about, I mean, some psychologists would say after about three or four years old, you, you have no more blank canvas left, which means that the rest of your life is spent relearning, okay? Relearning, that's the key. That's where the, the profit and the wealth and the growth and, and the fulfillment comes from is realizing that your life is not just a learning game. In fact, specifically, it is a re-learning game. How many of you have been approaching it that way? How many of you look at your business, your relationship, your relationship with food, okay, and exercise, and any of those things, any of the categories that are priorities to you, that are important, your spiritual health, your physical health, uh, your business, everything, and look at it as, what do I want to relearn today? What do I need to relearn today to be more successful. 
Now, this is a concept right now. And I hope before you proceed, if you're watching this and you can't concede to that concept, you're not willing to just ask yourself in the morning, right now, Monday, whatever, what are some of the things that I might need to relearn to be more successful? It's like Mark Twain talks about that it's not what you don't know, it's what you do know that just ain't so that gets you into trouble. So it's not just what you do know. In fact, more what you don't know, it's more importantly, it's what you do know that you need to relearn, which would venture to say that one of the most effective things you can do in life is get really good at understanding and applying the art of relearning, how to relearn things. And it's much easier said than done, okay? So as we consider this, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is agree that there are things you already know that are holding you back, okay? One of the craziest things that I've, I study the brain constantly. I study psychology, I study neurology, study kinesiology, I, I love it all. I love understanding all the factors, energy, everything that impacts our human behavior. And at its core, one of, one of the most incredible and scary realizations, okay, I've talked about all the time on here, and that is that your brain's top priority is to keep you safe, which means to keep you predictable. This, this cannot be talked about enough, because safe sounds nice until we realize that to the brain, okay, and specifically those one to two million unconscious thoughts a day, okay, predict a babble, <laughs> okay, nobody's perfect. All right, safe equals predictable. That cannot be stressed enough. That we, we start to change, which is required to get different results, okay. Einstein was pretty brilliant and said that you can't do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. He also said you can't use the same set of thinking that created the problem to solve it. So relearning, again, is essential, and becoming unpredictable is essential to being able to relearn, to ask yourself questions you hadn't asked before, to look at things differently. But understand that as soon as you take a step off the reservation of your comfort zone, no matter how small or how large the leap, how small the step, how large the leap, you are immediately going to be met with resistance. You're going to be met with stress. You're met with overwhelm, with confusion, with fear, with guilt, or even shame. As soon as you step off the reservation, you will become more acutely aware of all the counterattacks, all the defensive mechanisms that your brain has available to it. We just named a few that it deploys to keep you predictable. Those of you going, wow, why would my brain want me to be, want me to, to be confused? Why would my brain want me to be stressed? Why would my brain want me to be afraid? Well, because it, it thinks it's doing you a service. It, it's looking out for you. Because it's learned over a lot longer than you've been alive. Okay, The human brain and evolutionary psychology and the way we're shaped and everything else, it's learned that if it doesn't do that, you are at greater risk of no longer existing, no longer being alive, and your brain does not want you to die. It's wired into your physicality, to your nervous system that doesn't have the cognition that your brain or those of you who may have a similar belief system that I do into your soul or your spirit um, or a, a greater power or energy, whatever it is that you connect to there is really critical. But the physical part of your brain, okay, that amygdala, that core operating center, wants to keep you safe and predictable, which means it wants to make it really hard for you to do that. It wants to make it really difficult for you to relearn. Not because it's plotting against you, because it really feels that that's the best way to go. For good reason. Thank goodness for that. Okay? Thank goodness for that. There are a lot of good things about what the brain does that when it comes time to grow, we can get frustrated with. But let's be grateful for some of the things that it does, because... For, you know, fear can heighten your senses just as much as it can put you into inaction if you start to understand it differently. You know, for example, if you're laying down on the couch for too long and you stand up too fast and you get lightheaded, you're probably not going to panic and freak out and ask someone to take you to the ER because you know, I stood up too fast. There is incredible power in understanding, incredible power in terms of your psyche, in terms of your energy, in understanding why something is happening to you. Okay, or not happening to you. 
It is in not knowing that creates some of the biggest challenges. It's not knowing that creates some of the biggest challenges. Like if I was walking down the street, walking my dog, for example, and maybe I got super lightheaded, felt like I was going to pass out. That would be a much scarier situation for most people than just standing up off the couch too fast because I don't know why it's happening. I don't know what's occurring. And so the level of panic increases. That's one of the great values of awareness. If you can understand where it's coming from, now you've got a level playing field to figure out what you can do about it. And so certain things, that resistance, if it can heighten our senses rather than the typical human response, which is to lower our senses and go into survival mode and go into our defaults as a human being, things that we thought we had gotten rid of and we had changed a long time ago about how we talk, how we interact, how we feel, they're all going to come back because they're your default programming and that's all your brain can grab onto when it's in survival mode. So we're going to want to understand that as we step off the reservation of our comfort zone, we're going to be hit with resistance. But what we can control is how we interpret that resistance. We can relearn. We can relearn how we interpret that resistance. And it's, it's really hard to do because it requires evidence. You cannot relearn how to interpret this resistance without evidence. And evidence comes from when we step through the resistance, take the actions that someone who thought differently would take, and then acknowledge them and celebrate them, and then do it again, and again, and again. In The Greatest Salesman of the World, okay, Og Mandino talks about reading the scrolls three times a day for 30 days each, starting with scroll two, because scroll two to scroll 10 are the secrets of success, the wisdom of the ages. Scroll one is the secret to learning. This is what Pathros taught Hafid when he gave him the scrolls. said, scroll one is the secret of learning, and scroll two to ten are the secrets of success, the principles of success and the wisdom of the ages. And in, in scroll one, Og gives us some incredible validation for how we learn, or more importantly, relearn. And, it's, and some of the most powerful language is right at the very beginning of the scroll. Today, I begin a new life. Today. Today, I bring an infant's perspective to what I'm doing, which is beautiful on a lot of levels, on a lot of levels, because not only are you bringing an, an infant's perspective to seeing things differently, but also the requirement to see them simply, to see them in simple terms. Because one of the greatest places unhealthy habits of thinking love to hide is in complexities and rationalities and justifications. Again, some of your unhealthiest habits' favorite place to hide is underneath complexities and justifications and rationalities. Okay, So the simpler life becomes, the less likely they are able to hide. The higher our resistance comes because we're going to expose our own defenses for predictability. But that is what is required to grow. Relearning, relearning is a destructive process. Very similar to lifting weights and you're breaking down those tissues so that they can become stronger. The brain is very similar. We want to make sure we push it in an appropriate amount as we lean into that resistance, but not so far that we break it or we get injured like we would if we push too hard lifting weights. Okay? So we can relearn how we interpret this resistance if we can do it enough with the right perspective, the right awareness, the right consistency as Og legs out in scroll one to be able to demonstrate and create evidence that that brain cannot deny. That we're not going to die if we do that every day. That we're, we're not going to self-destruct if we're a little bit more consistent in what time we get up in the morning. Okay? We're not going to spontaneously combust if we make a few more phone calls every day, or we're a little bit more consistent with other things. Because it's hard for it at first. And all it can do is, is think about how hard that was, and if we're going to do that for the next year, it times how hard that is by 365. So let's say, just for total silly math, let's say on a scale of 1 to 10, today was a 10. We feel really good about it because we were on point, we were super productive, However, the brain's going to go, hey, way to go. And then as soon as it starts to look to the future, it goes, 
Okay, 10 out of 10 for the next year is 365 times 10, which means the next year is going to be 3,650 times harder than we can handle. 3,650 times harder than we can handle. No wonder resistance goes up. No wonder we sabotage ourselves because the brain doesn't realize, as we talked about last week in the power session, make a lot more sense if you saw that, by the way, how the brain can't realize our, our increase in ability. It just takes into account our current ability, current level of action, and then multiplies it out over however many days or years we, we care to send our brain forward to think about in terms of that being required for our success. So no wonder resistance goes crazy. No wonder we sabotage ourselves in this process. We haven't had an opportunity to relearn the things that can help us be able to do that appropriately. Like right now, I'm relearning several things in the gym. I'm having some major ugh, shoulder issues and common knowledge would tell me to go uh, to the doctor, to the, my orthopedic, and to get an x-ray, which I've done before, maybe get a cortisone shot to get the swelling down or whatever it is. And I'm going to my trainer, who is unbelievably experienced in mobility and, and the structure of the muscles and the body and stretching, and not just in terms of getting a great workout, but actually a workout that improves your body holistically, which is awesome. And I went in yesterday and I, I couldn't even lift my shoulder, okay? I mean, it was so much pain. And just through understanding the way the serratus connects to my pectoral and all these muscles that are underneath things that I didn't even know were there and going through some pain, okay? It is painful to get some of those muscles to activate properly. It is painful to work through some of the junk where, where I had been so biased to certain movements that it had tightened itself up and it had shortened its length and all the things you don't want to do muscles. Now I am relearning some things. I could have gone a pharmaceutical route. I could have gone a surgical route. And sometimes, in, in some cases, there's certainly a justification in doing that. Okay, If I had a big tear in my rotator cuff, then I'd know that that was no matter any amount of muscle work isn't going to help me there. But what I do know is I felt like the only next step was going to a doctor Monday morning because of how my shoulder was feeling. And I know after 30 minutes of working through some of these exercises, painful as they were, um, that he had me do, that I can, I can raise my arm above my head now. I can still feel it, okay? Because there, there's still some, some things to work through. And, but even just doing that three times, now the muscles are, are trusting themselves. Even that feels better. And it was so counterintuitive to do it, but I'm relearning in the gym. And it's powerful because of the physical uh, payoff. You know, being able to move my arm again, being able to put my arm through a jacket and not feel like my shoulder's going to dislocate. It, and it's awesome for that sake. But what's even cooler for me, personally, in my opinion as a coach, is I get to step back and watch myself relearn this and how I'm relearning it and assumptions I was making and resistance I create to doing it. And, and I'm only just getting started because it's this is not a one or two day thing. I went back in and did similar things today and it's feeling even better than it did on Monday, which is awesome. But I know if I don't pay attention to relearning that consistently and not relearning this just as a fix, as a patch, you know, as, as just something that's temporary, I'm paying attention to that as I'm relearning it as well. I'm learning so much about how I relearn in general that is so powerful for being able to apply it to other areas of my life for assumptions that I made and things that I thought I knew and, and all this stuff. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a fitness movement. Okay, I was a competitive power lifter for a number of years. I've done a lot of things the wrong way at the gym that I've learned a lot about the right way beyond you know, most personal trainers that I know just from trial and error. Okay? But with that said, I know that works against me too. The things that I think I know are usually what's holding me back. The things that I think I know are usually what's holding me back. So I'm eating some humble pie with my shoulder and working through these things and it's painful, okay? It is literally painful, okay? I, I was telling my trainer this morning, I said, I know I'm doing it right because I'm nauseous, okay? As I'm working through this, but the payoff is amazing. It's wonderful to be able to experience that, but I'm getting even more dividends from it as I look at how those principles apply to relearning how I approach my business, relearning how I approach my relationship, okay? Now, I want to share one thing really simply as we wrap this up, just so you can logically understand one of the primary reasons 
relearning is super difficult, okay? Up front, relearning initially is difficult because of the resistance, okay? But one of the other reasons it's difficult ongoing uh, is in addition to that resistance and our, our uh, rebelling against structure and other things is because of contrast, okay? Contrast is one of the biggest reasons why relearning is super difficult. And what I mean by contrast, okay? Contrast is talked about in art a lot because it creates dimension. It creates clarity. When there's great contrast, you can see the outlines, you can see the distinct figures. When there's not contrast, it can be really blurry or messy or whatever the case is. And sometimes that's on purpose, but in most cases, contrast is a good thing. And the brain loves contrast. And so, for example, if we're going to start something new, okay, I want to learn something new. Like I want to learn a new skill or a new hobby or a new strategy for my business. Oftentimes when we dive into something totally new, meaning you've never started a business before, not you're a serial entrepreneur and you're going to your 20th workshop, but you've never been to that particular workshop or worked with that particular person. I mean, it's totally new. So for example, you're going to start a business just because I know that applies to a lot of people on here. Okay. It's brand new. So just about everything you hear has massive contrast to what you already know. Okay. So here's what you know. And here's what you don't know. Okay. And you learn something new. Okay. So you learn something new about your business early on. Okay. It's going to be maybe 5% something you already knew. Okay. But 95% of it is new to you. And so the contrast is huge. The contrast of what you're learning compared to what you already know is huge because you're learning something new. So it's, it's obvious. Oh my gosh, I've never thought about that before. But the longer you're in it, the more this starts to change. The more you start hearing things where it's 25% of it you already know. And so 75% of it is new. That's still pretty significant. So you're still going to pay a lot of attention. But then fast forward as you feel yourself getting more and more stuck the things that seem to used to work, the, the things that seem to used to work, whatever, the things that used to work and the things that aren't working anymore and different things like that. What's happened is we've gone down this scale, okay? And what's happened is now 90% plus, you already know because you've already learned. Maybe categorically, maybe in generalities, but you've learned the gist, which only leaves, okay, about 10% or less of things that you don't know, if not worse than that. And so the contrast has gone down. You give me a new painting and it looks 90% like the painting I already have. Am I going to be interested in buying that painting? No, I'm not. Okay. If, if you teach me a new skill that looks 95% like the skill I'm already, I already have and I'm confident in, how close am I going to pay attention to that? Yet that is one of the great secrets to winning. This is where the relearning happens. If you can take this 10%, this 5%, this 3% and make it as contrastable, as clear and obvious as this 90%, you will master the art of relearning. When someone tells you something, you can feel your brain wanting to go into the I know category. Okay. And some of you do the I know, you know, and it, Talk to the hand, like I know, the, the non-humble, okay, conversationally narcissistic, I know kind of thing. Well, you're going to have a lot of work to do. But most of us, especially those who are drawn here to Habit Finder and the companies we work with, very heart-driven, very passion-driven. And so it's usually a soundingly humble, I know. Oh yeah, I know that. Like we want to be really agreeable, but we're putting it in our I know bucket. And our I know bucket is just going to write it off as it's pretty much what we're already doing. That's where I see so many people get stuck in relearning. It's pretty much what I'm already doing. Or even worse, that is what I'm already doing. Well, it is for 95% of what you're doing. But there's a 5% level that you haven't, you haven't pointed out and magnified. That is one of the keys to being able to get where you want to go. Case in point, how many of you have seen people do things in their business and create success that when you did them, it didn't work. How many of you have seen someone bake something amazing on TV and then you tried to bake it and it didn't look anything like what they did? Although 
90% of it you followed. The recipe, the order, the there's something there that if you can start to master relearning, you can start to open up and not fall victim to a lack of contrast, not fall victim to the I know bucket, and not fall victim to the resistance we have to relearning anything. Sometimes we can consciously and unconsciously incentivize ourselves, but at the core part of the brain, that part of the brain that, that Og talked about powerfully without even fully understanding it over 50 years ago, the part of the brain that makes us act in ways we do not comprehend, that never sleeps, he pointed out, meaning we can't compete with that part of the brain straight up. Okay, One-to-one, mano-a-mano, we cannot compete with that part of the brain straight up. We've got to use principles and other things that we work with people on and our clients to be able to overcome some of those things to level the playing field, make it a fair fight between you and your own brain because you're going to want to do that properly because your brain is going to help you quite a bit in what you create. Okay, I'm not saying you need to wage war against your brain. You just need to understand how it operates so that you can understand the biological side of personal development so that you can process through this uh, resistance so you can process through the I know buckets and so that you can process through these things and actually learn how to relearn because the more you learn for most people that haven't figured this piece out the more dangerous what you're learning becomes the more you learn how to learn better and better and better you learn how to relearn better and better and better is going to be able to take in even less information than other people and do even more with it so, in summary, learn how to relearn. It requires patience. It requires persistence. It requires measurement. It requires principles. It requires all of the things that we provide here at Habit Finder. If you have them somewhere else, if you can measure your thinking somewhere else, if you can work with people that are expertly trained in how to actually shift those measurements so that the emotional capacity aligns and the behavioral execution aligns, then awesome. Go with them. Make things happen. If you don't, share this out. Share this out to somebody who deserves to learn more about their thinking. Whether they work with us or not, you get the Habit Finder profile for free, for now, by the way. That's changing in 2020, just FYI. Okay, it's not going to be thousands of dollars, but we've realized that even with an incredible tool like that, that we want everyone to have, that if you don't put anything towards it, okay, even 20 bucks, that it is looked at in a completely different context. Okay, so which is a total loss leader. We're, we're not doing that for a profit center. Trust me, um, the people who are actually ready to take on their thinking, there's not enough of them out there for charging 15, 20 bucks for an assessment to make sense. It, we're doing that for, for the, the client. We're doing that for you. Because even just that little symbolic piece in place makes a difference. So if you haven't taken it, if you know people that haven't taken it, that you want to have that opportunity, make sure they go to habitfinder.com before the end of the year and take it. Because that's changing. And we're also releasing some ridiculously amazing tools, online course that is just unlike anything you've ever seen that we've been working on for the last three years that's launching in 2020 as well to make our, our principles, to make this stuff that actually works more accessible to people to be able to learn this stuff to be able to start to shift and then have those results pay for themselves as you continue on and working with us deeper and deeper in what is essentially relearning you that's what we're doing i mean that that's kind of one of a cool way to look at personal development relearn you to occur to yourself differently and then create that trickle effect so that all the things you're trying to do that seems like other people are doing you're not getting the same results you can solve that equation but also all the things that you want to do that you're not doing that you start to rationalize as I just need to do that and I'll get the results, but you don't know why you haven't done it. Okay. My wife was reading me a post last night about how uh, I plan to do the things that I set out to do in 2019, which I had originally brainstormed in 2018 and committed to do in 2017 from the recommitment I made in 2016, something like that. It was silly. It was funny, but it also hit really too close to home for me. She was like, is that not funny? I was like, it's funny, but oh man, that's how a lot of us are living because we're not relearning. We're not getting deep enough to where we actually think and what we're actually doing. We just, we want the quick fixes. And the problem is quick fixes create quick problems. And so we jump up and down and we, we, we never find ourselves on a real ramp rate, on a real trajectory. So you know people that are ready for that 
at least invite them to jump on these power sessions. Those aren't going away. These are gonna to continue to be for free here on our social media pages well into as long as we can, okay? Um, but please share this out, invite people in so that they can get an opportunity to get into the habit finder and find ways that they can start to relearn themselves so they can be more successful at home, they can be more successful at work, they can be more successful in play and everything that they do. So thank you so much for being here today for this power session. I know this was a lot, okay? So just grab onto one thing, one little thing, okay? Sometimes I can, I can just, <laughs> I realize that I'm prone to overdose people with information, but there's so much that I want you to know. And, uh, and I want you to make sure, I want to make sure that you know that we know, okay? I want to make sure you know that we know. We know where you're at. We know where you're really living. We know what you're really facing, despite what you continue to try, try and convince yourself you should be feeling about it or what you're supposed to be doing about it. Let's just pull the cover off. Let's get down to where you really are and who you really are. And that's where we're going to find some of the most powerful principles around your thinking that can make an impact on your emotional capacity, that will make an impact on your behavioral capacity, that creates an exponential multiplier of your results. Okay, again, thank you everybody. Have an awesome day. We'll see you next week.